Hi, I'm Melissa from polkadotchair.com and I'm excited to welcome you back to the next week of our spooky shelfy quilt along. If you are new here, welcome, or if you just stumbled on this video from somewhere, we are making a Halloween quilt called the Spooky Shelfy Quilt. And the quilt is broken down into five uh, weekly videos to help you walk you through the blocks. You do need the pattern and I've linked it in the description. This week we are making, we actually have a lot to cover <laughs> this week. Um, this week covers the cauldron and the potion quilt blocks for the quilt. Let me show you where they are. They make up um, the top few rows of the quilt. Let's start down here with the cauldron block. So we have the cauldron quilt block here that's got a couple little bubbles popping out of it. I'm gonna walk you through um, kind of just the basics of putting this block together. And then if we move up a row, not sure if I can get the whole thing in. Let's see if we can get all the potions. Okay, we have a set of potion quilt blocks. There are two of the smallest potion quilt blocks and it does note that in the pattern and the cutting directions will give you two blocks. And then one each of kind of like the shorter and the taller potion blocks as well. In addition to these blocks, we have bubble blocks. And the bubble block, there are two bubble blocks in the quilt. Both of the bubble blocks are the same. So you can see that it kind of um, makes it look like the bubbles are coming up out of the cauldron onto the other shelves of the quilt. So I have my pieces um, for my blocks cut and prepped. Um, I have sewn some of the steps in the blocks just because, like I said, there's a lot to cover this week. Um, but most of the techniques that we're gonna talk about today, we talked about in previous videos. So if you've been following along, then this should be uh, no problem for you. I'm gonna share. What I'll do is I'll go through and make each block and then um, I'll share with you my tips for making that block or anything that I feel like you might wanna pay attention to, um, to work as you go to work. Um, a few people ask me about how I keep my stuff organized. I like these design boards. Um, there are a lot of smaller pieces in this quilt. So what I usually do, since the cutting directions are by block, I will cut out a block at a time. And then I just have a stack of these little design boards. I'll link them in the description. And they've got uh, batting on them. So they get kind of messy looking. <laughs> After a while, you can see that they're well loved, um, but it keeps your pieces from sliding off and you can keep all of your pieces for that block together, which for me, keeping track of things like that, <laughs> this has been a big um, help. So I've got those. These are the potions blocks, the cauldron and the bubbles blocks. So I've done a little bit of prep ahead of time just to save some time. And um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna like move all this out of the way and get organized and then we will start sewing these blocks. All right guys, let's start with the cauldron block. Um, the instructions for the cauldron block, let to actually be my little post-it note. Start on page 12. That's of the printed pattern. The pattern that's in the kit may be a different page um, just because of how page breaks work and stuff. So here we have the cutting directions for the cauldron block. And just a reminder that um, last week I created a fabric key for you guys. You can go to my site and download it for free. It's polka.chair.com slash pattern updates. And you can grab a copy of that just to make it easier. So you know fabric V is this is fabric V. So just a reminder about that. So I've done some of the prep for the cauldron block already. And I want to walk you through some of the finishing steps for the block. So I'm going to set this aside. All right, so here I've got my pieces that I have left. Ooh, got the hiccups today. Bad timing for the hiccups. All right, so what I have done ahead of time is I have, of my large piece that will become the cauldron block, I have um, clipped the corners, stitched and flipped, snowballed the corners of these pieces, and I have pressed them. I have not trimmed them yet. I will go ahead and trim those because all my corners look pretty good. Then I have made the little feet 
I've created the top rim of the block. It's just a rectangle with two half square triangles on each side. I have pressed the seams open and I covered how to make the half square triangles in the video last week for the pumpkin block. So if you're not sure how to do the half square triangles or need a little more explanation versus what's in the video, then um, be sure to check that out. So as far as this block goes, all I need to do is sew the top, the center, and the bottom pieces to each other. But we still, for this block, um, and I'll do that off camera, we still for this block need to create the bubbles coming out of the top of the cauldron. So the prep I have done already, you have a bubble and a half bubble. And I have sewn the corners, let's see if I can get this to focus here. I have sewn the corners of those um, ahead of time. Now these are three quarter inch pieces and I think I mentioned last week that sometimes when I do the clip corners technique I don't clip the corners and this is one of those cases. I am not going to clip the corners so let me show you how I'm going to handle this. Zoom in a little bit. So over at my iron I'm just going to press these to the right side Then if you have it, what I like to use next is a quilter's clapper. If you don't have a quilter's clapper, you can use just a book, honestly. But these are hard to get to stay down, so just do that. Press on that real hard, and then I'm just going to let it sit and cool that way. It's never going to be perfectly flat, but it'll be better. So when you're dealing with such a small piece of fabric, um, to clip your corner is hard because it's hard to get a hold of it under your machine, under your foot. Um, it's just difficult. So you'll see with mine, and of course I clapped that in the wrong spot, so I actually made it worse. Let's fix that. So you'll see with mine, I have varying degrees of how accurate that seam is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clip out the center part. We talked about this last week for some of the smaller pieces. I'm only clipping out the middle. And I do have a little bit of a darker fabric underneath, but the thing to keep in mind is that this tiny little corner is half of, it's covered on a quarter inch by both sides by a seam. So you're not hardly going to see any of it. This is not a very big piece of fabric. So I trim those out. And I really did a number on that one corner. <laughs> Press these out. And then just double check on the back. Like this one, see how that one is just way off square. So since I did that, then what I can do is I just come in here with my scissors because I know that the purple square was square. So now when I construct the rest of my block, this might not be a perfect 45 degree angle, but if this is crooked, you'll notice that way more than that not being a perfect 45. So do that, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with this smaller piece of bubble. And then using the diagram on the pattern, which I guess I shouldn't have put away quite yet. <laughs> it's just a pretty simple construction process to sew the rest of these blocks together. It's not gonna look like they fit together quite yet, but here's all your pieces you're gonna sew together. I'm gonna go to my machine and stitch this and let you see what it looks like after it's finished, and then show you where to stitch it onto the cauldron. I've sewn the half bubble and the bubble to each other as noted in the pattern, and then the rest of the block as I mentioned before, I think I need to move this up a little bit. Just goes together. I'll move it up even more. I really got this camera in a high spot on my cutting mat. So that's how the rest of the block goes together, which actually the whole thing doesn't fit in the camera anyway, so I don't know why I was worried about it. So just sew the four sections together and you have a completed cauldron block. 
we're going to move on to the bubble block now. The bubble block directions for the printed pattern start on page 14. And as before, I've done a little bit of the prep ahead of time. What you're going to end up with as you sew this bubble block is three large sections that are sewn together. So um, all you need to do, these are just the snowballed corners like we talked about before. Um, this one, oh, I've got a little bit of fuzz in there. Again, I didn't trim those corners off just because it's so small you're not going to notice it. Um, these are the three different sizes of bubbles. They are, are um, small, medium, and large bubbles and there are two bubble blocks in the quilt. To assemble this, we're just going to follow the directions on page 15. As I mentioned before, I've done a little bit of this ahead of time just to kind of um, get you started and mostly because we've covered a lot of these techniques before. So we're just going to sew them together like so with the extra piece on the bottom and that will yield you a 12 and a half inch bubbles block. Let me sew those together and I'll show you what the finished block looks like. All right, I have the bubbles block sewn. Just finished it as shown in the diagram and then I will also show you the cauldron quilt block after they are put together. So cute little cauldron and bubbles coming out. Let's move on next to the potions bottles blocks, which start on page 16. Some of the prep done. We'll start with the smallest block. So for the smallest potion block, or the skinny, um, you've got two pieces of fabric sewn together, and then we've done our clipped corners. I'm gonna come in and just take out the middle since this is such a small corner. Leave that back piece in there. Just really helps to stabilize things when you're dealing with smaller pieces of fabric, especially when you're sewing on a 45 degree angle, which is technically the bias. Fabric has a tendency to stretch. <laughs> um, so clip those. This you can see is off a little bit, but that'll get caught in the seam. Then I have my lid and then a piece to sew on top. And one thing to note, um, and it is noted on the pattern, um, is that I have given you a little bit of extra um, for this piece because you can take fabric off, you can't put fabric back on. So after you're done, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that this piece is eight and a half inches tall. It's probably a little bit bigger than that. Um, if it is a little bit bigger than that, then just trim it down, but that is normal. So I don't want you to be concerned if your block turns out to be a little bit taller than you think it should be. So I'm going to sew these three pieces together. And I'll show you that when I show you all of the completed potions blocks. Then just going in order with the pattern, moving on to, I call it the two potions block. It's a potions block. With two, it's a potions block with two potions, uh, which sounds so silly. Um, it's got a shorter and a taller block. So some of the prep work done with this one already again. Now there is something unique about this one. So I have clipped the corners, sewn this together, sewn my label. This is a really fun place to fussy cut a little bit of fabric there. And we've got the top of the block. Now this one we're going to um, snowball this corner as well, but it's done a little bit differently. So I've got my pen. The diagonal for my squares. Now the difference with this is I think I mentioned in the pumpkin block it didn't matter where whether you clipped your corners or sewed the pieces first this one it does because you're going to line this up on this top corners but as you can see it's going to cross over the seam between the two fabrics so this one you want to make sure that you have sewn these two strips of fabric together before you complete your 
corner clips and I will sew these and then show you how to assemble this block. pieces sewn and come over to my iron flip that up flip that up and I am a little bit crooked on this one side so I actually this one I'll probably remove the stitching and, and trim that just because it's off by quite a bit then I'm going to come in and trim out the extra corners then we just assemble the three pieces of the block and once again you'll most likely need to trim some from the top of this block but it's noted on the pattern how much you need to trim off. So I'll set that aside. I'll be sure to show it to you when it's finished. Then the last potion block I have done again some of the prep. I've got the pieces, the clipped corners, the large piece and then this one it has a little cap that's kind of like a fun little shape. So these are some of the pieces for the cap. And it's noted, so here's your cap piece. This one's a little different. So we're going to snowball and clip these two corners. We'll press these. I've just pre-sewn that. That's all I did. You come in and clip the extra seam allowance. I mentioned before last week, I just prefer to use scissors for this step. It's up to you. Now, we need to do the same thing again with two more of our squares, but you'll notice that this piece overlaps this piece. It's kind of like a flying geese block. So you do need to make sure that you press and trim this before you sew these next two pieces. So then I just need to place these on here and it will give us a really kind of fun shape for the top of this bottle. Take this to my machine. So, um, Sewn, bring it over to the iron. And we'll come in and press that. Here's another fun little spot. You could fussy cut some of your fabric if you like. Then we just simply have two pieces here to sew. And then once that sews together, this piece will fit on top. And the rest of the block, just like a puzzle, all the little pieces fit together. Honestly, I think that's why a lot of people really like quilting, a lot of like puzzle building, but you could keep it. So that's how that goes together. I'm gonna sew all of these potions blocks together, get them pressed and looking good. And if necessary, I'll trim and square up. I did wanna give you guys a tip about squaring up. If you ever notice that you feel like one of these pieces is not square anymore, but you don't want to remove too much fabric. The trick with this when you're snowballing a corner is whatever this piece was to start, in this case this black piece of fabric, is the same size it should be when it's finished. So in this case, this piece of black fabric should be, so this piece was two and a half by four to start. So after I am finished, it should still be two and a half by four. 
Where's my two and a half inch ruler? I'm just probably gonna come out too small. But you can see, so if I wanted to on this one, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I do have a little bit of leeway right here. So after I am done trimming all this off, I'll just go ahead and do that now. Trim this here. Line that up. Trim the other side and then check to see if it is still four inches wide. And it is just shy of four inches. It's not perfectly square on the sides, but I wouldn't trim them down. I would just make sure when you sew this piece, that this piece is square to the corner of that piece. And what will happen is if you do a quarter inch seam is that on the back, as you sew, that little tiny part here that just is a little bit wonky, it will catch that and you'll end up with the square corner again. All right, they are pressed. Between this um, short potions block and this tall potions block, there is a strip of uh, background fabric that goes in between there. You're gonna wanna sew um, before you finish assembling this block. I'm not gonna add that right now because I'm working on a freebie project for you guys for when we're done with this. You can hopefully use some of your leftover scraps. So I'm leaving mine as is. But there is my small potions, my tall, and then my medium. Try not to zoom this out too much because it really distorts the image when I zoom out a lot. And you can see this is a little off. I need to come in here and square that up, but I'll do that off camera so that you can see the three potions blocks. Next week, we are going to be finishing the quilt. I will briefly touch on the witch hat block, and then I have a video to link to you guys for the applique for the spider block and some of the finishing steps. But if you have specific questions about finishing the quilt, I'd appreciate it if you leave them in the comments section of this video because then I can make sure to address them when I film the video next week. And I hope you guys have a great holiday weekend full of lots of fun Halloween sewing.